Today we're going to look at pharmacophores. A good simplification, actually, of the pharmacophore concept exists in the math world in the form of factors, or in this case, the greatest common factor. We're going to find the greatest common factor of the following two numbers, 4 and 28. We're going to do this by using a factor tree to factor each number down to their prime factorization, or let's say their features. So we have 2 times 2, 2 times 2 times 7. And we can see that the largest number these two numbers have in common is the number 4. Or if we were to look at this through the biochemical glasses, we could say that 4 and 28 are pharmacophores because they have the number 4, or the feature 4, in common. IUPAC definition of a pharmacophore is as follows. A pharmacophore is the ensemble of steric and electronic features that is necessary to ensure the optimal supramolecular interactions with a specific biological target and to trigger or block its biological response. Let's go ahead and take a look at our first group of pharmacophores. These are three quinine, strychnine, and 1,2,3,4-tetrahydroisoquinoline are physiologically active and very potent pharmacophores. Now, each, three, each of these have features in common with each other, which I have circled in red on each one of these molecules. For some compounds and molecules, the potency of them is increased as larger hydrophilic groups are added, but this isn't the case for all molecules. Let's go ahead and take a look at another group of pharmacophores. This group consists of epinephrine, amphetamine like methamphetamine, and mescaline. Now the recurring feature here is 2-phenylethanamine, which basically consists of a nitrogen, a 2-carbon chain, and an aromatic ring. This group of pharmacophores is an excellent example of the features, or some of the features, that you look for when you're classifying molecules into common groups or looking for pharmacophores. Let's take a look at the whole list now. So is it an H bond acceptor, an H bond donor, cationic, that is, does it have a positive charge, anionic, does it have a negative charge, hydrophobic, aromatic, or a combination of one to six of these. That is, could it be aromatic and an H bond acceptor, or an H bond donor and cationic? Let's go ahead and take a look at, again, at phenylethanamine and we're going to note the features we just listed. It has an aromatic ring, it's an H bond donor, and it's an H bond acceptor. Now, there are computer programs that exist today that you could input these features of 2-phenylethanamine, and it would find molecules um, by going through and looking through a, a previously established database. It would find molecules that are like epinephrine, amphetamine, and mescaline. They could in fact be those same molecules. Now the difference is um, from em epinephrine, amphetamine, and mescaline is that the molecules that the computer program finds may not be physiologically active. And one of the reasons for this is the effect that pH has on features and classifications of pharmacophores. For example, at pH 7, um, this, pharma, this molecule, an uh, aromatic ring with a nitrogen, is an H bond acceptor. Whereas at pH 1, it is an H bond donor and it becomes also cationic because it has a positive charge on the nitrogen. Either way, pharmacophores are still very important in drug research because they represent chemical functions valid not just for currently bound atoms in a molecule, but also atoms of unknown molecules, and therefore those unknown molecules themselves. Pharmacophores offer a very promising area of drug research and of a future success in developing more effective drugs to treat diseases that plague us today. Thank you for watching my video and I hope you enjoyed learning about pharmacophores.